I have no idea what this book is saying because it's written in Chinese. I don't read Chinese. And you know what? Your code might as well be written in Chinese because I don't know what it's saying either. I don't speak Chinese. I have a friend that does though. So today we're gonna talk about five things you can do to make sure that your code is more readable. It's important for your code to be readable. I've looked at my own code in the past and wondered what the heck I was thinking. And you may have ran into a similar problem. So in a couple years from now, when you look back at your code, the idea is that you actually understand what you were thinking. And so to help you out with that, today we're gonna talk about five things to make your code more readable and consequently easier to understand. Number one. So the first tip I have to make your code more readable is to use that enter key. When you're writing code and you have one line that's going clear off the screen, that's not ideal. If you find yourself having to scroll to the right or left to be able to read your code, then this is a problem. You can split it up into separate lines by hitting that enter key. I don't care if you can write it in one line. I want to be able to read it. What I'm trying to say is use that enter key. Tip number two to make your code more readable is to comment your code and to use doc strings where appropriate. If you don't know what a doc string is, a doc string is what goes underneath a function that explains the parameters of the function and what the function returns. Comments are the easiest thing to make your code more readable because you can actually type out what is going on. In fact, you should get in a good habit of doing so because though it may seem obvious what's going on to you now, think of what it's gonna be like five years from now when you go back and look at that code or even consider the other people that have to read over your code because when you give the code over to the manager they might not have the same understanding that you have about this coding technique and may therefore need to rely on your comments to know what's going on so commenting your code is essential for making your code readable and therefore is number two on our list which brings us in to number three, using good variable names. Look, I've seen people who are writing code use funny variable names just to get a laugh. And though it might be funny in the moment, when they go back and look at that code later, none of those names are gonna be funny or even make sense, unless you're really creative. Here's a quick quiz for you. Say you're doing a statistical t-test and you get out your p-value and you wanna save that as a variable. Which of the following names would be the most appropriate to call this variable? Is it A, Chuck Norris, B, Beluga, C, Green, or D, P underscore value. Which one do you think is gonna make the most sense? It's obvious. You need to make variable names that are associated with what you're actually doing. That way, when you look at your code later, it makes sense. The reader of your code can follow along easily what you're actually doing. Number four, if your code's getting too long, then I suggest getting different tabs or files and using those as imports. What do I mean by this? It's a good question. If your code is so long that you're scrolling for days through functions and functions, this can be a little bit overwhelming. So what might be a better idea is taking some classes and functions that relate to each other, putting them in a separate document, and then importing that document into your main code. And that way, you can refer to your different classes and functions a lot easier, and you don't have to scroll through so much stuff to be able to see the actual juice and main meat of what your code was meant to do. It helps you stay more organized and therefore more efficient. Reason number five, our final reason for today. To make your code more readable, you need to make sure your plots include the appropriate axis labels, titles, legends, if necessary. So if your code creates a plot and there's no labels of the axes, how do we know what units you measured in? How do we know what the plot's actually saying? How do we know if it's skewed or not? There's all kinds of ambiguity that can happen because a plot is either mislabeled or missing labeled. These titles and labels need to be specific to what's going on and interpretable. So the next time you have to write some code, keep these tips in mind. I'm telling you, when you look back at your code, you'll be able to understand with ease what you were thinking. It won't be like trying to read Chinese that you don't understand. So in review, we have use the enter key, comment your code, use appropriate variable names. If your code's too long, use different tabs and files. And last, label and title your plots appropriately. If you follow these five tips, you are on your way to creating code that is readable and therefore usable. So please consider subscribing. I would love to see you in the future. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and check out this other video I made where I discuss the top five things I've seen that's making people's code run slow. <laughs>